What's up Ozones, welcome to the Ozone and welcome to another Security Breach Theory video. So yeah, welcome back. Today we are going through what you guys have been wanting me to cover for quite a while, or I say quite a while, but ever since Security Breach came out. And that is the retro CDs in the Security Breach. Basically, there are these collectibles all around uh, the Pizzaplex. Uh, during the end game, I, I, I guess, when you have Roxy's eyes, you can you can see these retro CDs hidden around the Pizzaplex with Roxy's eyes, and uh, they have some very interesting lore bits, and they have a lot of lore. So I'm actually going to be splitting this video kind of into two or three parts. Uh, I think what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to make this first video kind of just summarizing what happens in these CDs, who are in them, kind of like the premise of the whole thing. And then in the next video, I'm going to make kind of a big theory kind of surrounding it, an overarching theory. It's going to tie into some of the Afton family stuff. It's going to kind of tie into more stuff, maybe Princess Quest and maybe even the, uh, the Afton ending, um, blah, blah, blah. Uh, but you will see that very soon. So uh, make sure that you subscribe so that you will see when I upload that. Anyway, for today, I'm going to just kind of introduce this concept of the retro CDs, what they are, and uh, yeah, who they're concerning, because uh, <laughs> they get kind of complicated, I think. I think the first big thing that I, I realized about these is that there's actually 16 of these CDs, uh, and that kind of ties, that, that makes a parallel with the tapes in FNAF VR. And instantly, in my brain, it just kind of clicked like, this must have some sort of connection to Vanny, right? Because we played as Vanny in FNAF VR. Um, we heard uh, Tape Girl be like, "Ah, uh, you've got to, you've got to get rid of Glitchtrap, whatever." <laughs> there were sixteen of those tapes, and there's sixteen of these CDs, and I don't think that's a coincidence. So, um, basically, what these CDs are is they are recordings of therapy sessions with um, patients. Let's just say that. And different therapists as well, but we'll talk about that in a second. So, um, basically, they're therapist tapes. When you first kind of listen to them, it sounds like it's therapy for one person. But as you dive deep into them, you realize that it's actually for two different people or two different personalities, okay? Um, so, basically, they're... It, the biggest piece of evidence for this, of course, is the tape number. So you'll see there's kind of like one number and then there's a second number. So the first number is what number tape it is. So one, two, three, four, all the way up to 16. Then the second number can be split into two. The first two numbers are the patient number, I assume. And the second uh, two numbers are, I guess, like the session number. I'm not too sure about that. But these last numbers kind of count upwards. Um, the first two numbers don't, but they change between two. So we have patient 71 and we have patient 46. Now, patient 71 is constantly called Vanessa. Hello, Vanessa. How are you feeling today? You look a little tired. Okay, so we can assume that P patient 71 is Vanessa, which would make a lot of sense because we know that there's a whole lot of Vanessa kind of Vanny stuff going on. Um, she probably needs therapy if she's got something in her brain, like Afton, for example, Glitchtrap. Um, and Vanessa is very highly responsive. She actually answers the questions. She actually talks about things freely. Uh, I mean, they're still very subtle things, but she still actually talks, unlike patient 46, who doesn't say a word during the entire thing. Well, now I understand there's a new issue. It came on just recently, rather suddenly. Can you tell me about it? What issue? I've been doing my job. Actually, one thing to note about that is that patient 46 uh, is expresses emotions through kind of movements, I would, I, I, I would say. Like, a lot of the time, a lot of the time patient 46 laughs at things that the therapist says and you can tell that something kind of off. You don't want me to get in trouble, do you? I could be put in the corner for a time out. Yeah, you think that's funny, huh? Anyway, speaking of kind of like differences between the two patients, I feel like there's a lot of contrasts to show that they are two 
completely different people, but maybe the same. Here's an example of that. So Vanessa likes the big bright blue sky, while patient 46 requests that the blinds are closed so that it looks like a cubby hole or a cave. Just to note, that's sort of rabbit-like. And Vanessa doesn't like dark basements, while patient 46 likes being alone in an enclosed area, um, yeah, indoors. Patient 46 doesn't suit the chair that they are in, however, Vanessa feels like she could fall asleep in the chair. Patient 46 requests that the flowers in the room are moved, but one day Vanessa comes in and she smells the flowers. She also likes the smell of them, so it's not, it's not, it's not all trickery. Patient 46 takes a candy without asking, but when Vanessa comes in one day, she gets asked if she wants a candy and she refuses because it's too many calories. And during ink blot tests, Vanessa picks out a treehouse and a beetle, while patient 46 picks out a mask. And it's very important to, to note here that, that Vanessa is even told that there could be a face in, in the ink blot, but she doesn't see it, okay? Uh, and the face is kind of like a mask. So there's a huge contrast with a lot of these points. That's good. Now, what about this one? A beetle. Really? Looks like a face to me. That's very interesting. Although when you first listen to this, it feels like one person the entire way through, kind of two personalities are, are showing up here. So it's either two people completely, or it's one person with two personalities and yeah, you can tell who this is. You can tell what's going on here, I think. My personal opinion is that patient 46 is Vanny, <laughs> essentially. Um, we've got Vanessa uh, as the first patient who is really highly responsive and Vanny as the other patient who doesn't respond at all. It's very creepy. Um, I mean, I mean, another way to kind of incorporate Vanny into here is, is that the therapist actually go missing okay apparently one of them was mangled and was messed up by machinery uh and i i really highly believe this to be vanny um because it kind of fits the whole theme of security breach we know that there were missing people at the pizza plex so i feel like i feel like vanny maybe uh let out a bit of anger over uh, over the therapists Apparently, I'm the fourth therapist you've had. And apparently, all three of your former therapists have gone missing. Or, two of them are missing. I don't want to scare you, but I have to tell you that one of them was found dead. That doesn't seem to upset you. Well, then I guess I'll go ahead and tell you that the woman's body was pretty messed up. It looked like it was mangled by machinery. That doesn't bother you either. So another theme that I feel like I should probably come out and say because I, I feel like it's a very, very big contrast, but something that really, really needs to be picked up upon is the fact that Vanessa seems like she's being manipulated, but Vanny seems like she's doing the manipulating. And that's, that is said in one of the tapes. I keep calling them tapes, I mean retro CDs, you know what I mean. They say you were in communication with some, or maybe something, pretty strange. What do you think about that? Nothing? Well, the texts say it looked to them like it was an attempt to manipulate you, or maybe to lure you somewhere. There, that's better. On this side of the desk. I can see your eyes. Thing is, when I read the communications, I get something different out of them. I don't think you're being manipulated here. I think you're the one doing the manipulating. Clearly Afton is is in Vanessa's head. Glitchstrap is in Vanessa's head and she's trying to do something about it, but to no avail. And this is where I bring back the whole idea of the reluctant follower thing. Um, sure, Vanny is killing with her own free will, but she is being influenced reluctantly by Glitchtrap, I feel like. 
And another big thing that I feel like I need to mention in this video is that uh, <laughs> there's a lot of references to the FNAF AR emails. Yeah, so we learned that Vanny has kind of hacked into the security systems and it has a lot of points that go with the FNAF AR emails. Remember, we were first introduced to this whole idea of Vanny kind of hacking into the security systems in FNAF AR. It's kind of why all of the AR animatronics went savage and attack you in your house. Um, there's actually so much lore there's actually so much lore in the emails it's insane if you haven't read them uh, underscore actually has made a good a nice little layout of all of the emails in one um, so you can go there uh, in the description below and uh, read all of them for yourself but some of them are very very interesting and a lot of them tie in to what we're talking about in these tapes for example Lewis is mentioned Lewis uh, who was talking to Ness in the emails Obviously, Ness, Vanessa. Uh, it's clear that Lewis is talking to Vanessa. Vanessa actually likes talking to Lewis. That's something that we learn in the CDs. But their conversations are very, very strange. Who are you talking to in these? No one. Sometimes I talk with Lewis. He's in the marketing department. He's nice, I guess. Yes, I see Lewis here. But there's someone else. I'm going to point out um <laughs> I'm going to point out a few of Vanessa's online searches. We have the Viking Blood Eagle 12 month calendar, how to induce compliance in human subjects. Literally just the word help. I sometimes search that myself. How far can a human being be cut in half before losing consciousness? Three lifelike human male rubber masks and uh, ordering thumb screws, which if you didn't know, is a method of torture. And we also hear in both the retro CDs and these emails that Vanessa was ordering fur of some kind and she was ordering the masks. Um, so she's building a costume. Um, but what makes all of this information valuable to me is that not only is there a huge contrast in Vanessa in the retro CDs, but there's a huge contrast to her in the emails too. For example, yes, we are hearing about the uh, inducing compliance in human subjects and cutting a human in half uh, and it losing consciousness, you know, like we're hearing about all of that, but at the same time we know, we know from these emails that Vanessa has looked up flowers and the migration patterns of bees cupcake cookbooks, she has rainbow hair extensions, and she has glittery pink journals with puppy pictures. Like, this is really, really strange because there's one side of her that's really sweet and innocent, and there's this other side that's really creepy, and that's what I like in, like, a... I was gonna say that's what I like in a murderer, that's probably not what I should say. That's what I like in a, in a game antagonist, or just an antagonist in general, um, when they have, like, this really innocent side, but behind that, there's this figure and uh, they're killing people. So, we hear in the emails that she's been ordering fur, she's been ordering masks, um, and, and, it, and all of this with the contrast, it seems to show that these emails were sent at the same sort of time that she was having these therapy sessions. I guess that kind of shows that FNAF AR sort of has it's really difficult to, to place security reach in the timeline properly, of course, but there seems to be a correlation between security breach and AR in a lot of different ways, a lot more ways than you may have first expected. But I feel like this whole story of, you know, Vanessa talking to Lewis, this whole therapy, like Vanny killing therapists, all of these contrasts, it's all just Vanny's origin story. I feel like it's Vanny's origin story, but there's still a lot of things that are left unexplained from it. For example, the fire ending, when Freddy lights a fire to the building and pushes off Vanny with him, we see that Vanny is in fact Vanessa, she's unmasked. But then we get a really, really, really weird picture at the end showing that Vanessa is still in the burning building. So how can she be 
Vanny and in the building. And that doesn't make sense. A lot of people are saying that that's Vanessa's spirit looking down on Vanny. Um, but I, I don't think it is. I feel like there's something bigger going on here. Are there two Vanessas? That... <laughs> I, I don't even want to think about that at this point. And of course, there are still more mysteries to be solved in Security Breach. There's the whole issue of the uh, the whole family, and that comes up a lot in the tapes too. Um, there's also Afton. Where does he come into this? Is Glitchtrap truly just controlling Vanessa and uh, none of it's Vanessa's fault? You know, all of these questions need to be answered and I feel like I am on the verge of answering them very soon. So in the next video about the tapes, we are going to be talking more in depth about uh, about these tapes, obviously. Um, there's a lot to do with the Afton family, so I want to tie in the Afton family to all of this uh, with <laughs> everything that I've said today. There's so much to unpack, I'm, I'm so sorry. I hope that you really enjoy this video. I hope that you will enjoy future videos because I'm I'm trying hard to make them at the moment, and uh, I'm feeling a little bit blunt. Uh, blunt. <laughs> I'm feeling a little bit burnt out. Can you tell? But I'm really enjoying making this content for you. So make sure that you subscribe so that you can see more. And yeah, I've been Ozone, but I have to go Zone. <laughs> Goodbye.